Hey everyone, I want to give a quick walkthrough of installing Beef, the browser exploitation framework, onto Ubuntu 18.04. Now, the Beef project has installation instructions that shows how to install Beef, and they're pretty good, but as I was following through them, there was one little spot I got a hiccup on, and I want to walk through, show that, and show how I resolve that to get it up and running within my system. So here I have a demo Ubuntu image. It's a virtual machine that's built up and we're going to go through and we're going to walk through the steps to do this. The first thing we need is to install Ruby. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do an apt install of Ruby and Ruby dev. Now when this goes through and asks me if I want to continue, I just do yes. And it's going to go ahead and pull down. It's going to install Ruby for me to make sure that I have that. Because if you've used Beef before, if you heard about Beef, you know that Beef is built upon Ruby. So we can see here, looking at some of the documents or the images coming out here, that we're installing Ruby 2.5. Now, Beef requires Ruby 2.3 or higher. So 2.5 will work for us as we go in through this. So now I've got Ruby installed. The next thing I'm going to do is I actually want to pull down the beef code to do this. Well, I, we're going to use git to do that. So before we can do that, let's go ahead and install git for us. So we'll do sudo apt install git. And this will actually go ahead and get the git command available for us. So that way we can actually pull down the beef code because that's what we're actually going to run. All right, so we've got git installed. So now we can pull the project. So we'll do git clone. All right, so it's github.com slash beef project slash beef. So we're cloning that into a folder called beef. So when we do an ls here, we can see now we've got a beef folder. So we'll cd into beef. Now at this point, we can go ahead and look at the files that are in here. What they say is on the instructions, just go ahead and do dot slash install to do the install. So let's try that and see what happens. So we'll do dot slash install. And we'll say, yeah, we want to continue. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to pull through all the different packages that it needs tells us how much space it's going to take. It's going to go and it's going to pull all this information. It's going to do this build. It's going to install the Ruby gems that we need, get it up and running, so that way we should be ready to go. Okay, so here we can see we actually ran into an issue of a permission issue. One of the things we can do to actually get around this is we can rerun the install and run it as sudo. We'll say yes. And it'll go through and it'll start pulling all that information again to rebuild the package. Okay, now that took a little bit of time. It may take a few minutes for that to actually run through. I've cut the video short, so you don't have to sit there and watch it all run through, but it does take a little bit of time. And once it successfully runs through, then it should pop to this right here saying installation completed. Now you can just run dot slash beef to launch beef. So let's try that. All right, so notice now when we run this, we get this error message. And it says, really down here at the bottom, require cannot load such file XML RPC slash client. So for some reason, we're missing a gem here and we're unable to go ahead and move forward to actually load up and run beef. So to, to resolve this, what I've done, let's go ahead and list the directory again. I'm going to remove the gem lock file that we can see right here. So rm gem file.lock. So we can see that the gem file lock is gone now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to edit the gem file. So we'll go ahead and do that with 
permissions anyway. It just makes it easier. So I'm going to use Nano because it's a simple text editor. And we'll edit the gem file. So here we can see the gem file. This lets out all the gems that we need to have within our application that are needed. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and add a new line. And we'll say gem XML RPC. And that's all we need to do. So we'll go ahead and save the file. So down here we can see, uh, I'm gonna actually do a control X, which is down here at the bottom here. It's gonna ask me if I wanna save it. I'll do yes, save it to gem file. All right, so we've resaved it. Now what we have to do is we actually have to reinstall. So we'll do this sudo dot slash install. You'll say yes. It'll run through again. Of course, this may take a few minutes for this to run all the way through. So give it a little bit of time before we're ready to start going. Okay, so it basically just installed that one item, the XML RPC. So hopefully we should be good to go. So let's try this. So again, let's do the dot slash beef. And notice this time it's actually loading up and working. Uh, we can see beef is loading, wait a few seconds. And here we can see that it is up and running. So it gives us the interfaces that it's on. Uh, we can see that it's also saying that the default username and weak password is in use. So it gives us a new password for this instance right here. So one of the things we can actually do for this, instead of going in and trying this really long password, is if we actually change the password to something else, then we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna show you how to change that password. So we're gonna go ahead and control C to stop our beef server. Now remember, if we do a list, we actually have this config.yaml file. So let's go ahead and we're gonna edit that file. So we're gonna we're gonna do sudo nano config.yaml. And in here you can see where they have the credentials set up. So because it's the default credentials, it actually tries to help you out and stop that. And that's why it creates that long secret password. So you could do something, right? So demo password, uh, you know, obviously make this something that's unique. You can change the username if you want. Uh, so if we actually wanted to, we could try doing something like demo and demo. So now it's not the default beef beef. Obviously you don't want to use simple credentials like this, um, but just for this case, I just want to show you how to change this and something easy for us to remember when we go to, to set this up. So again, we do control X. We want to save the changes. Now when we do beef this time, we've modified the password. So we shouldn't have to worry about this coming up and telling us. So notice this time there is no default password for this instance that's sitting out here. So this tells us where we're located. So obviously we can take this and say, oh, I wanna to go to the UI panel. So we'll copy this link. We'll open up Firefox and we'll go ahead and go to that link. So you can see us actually logging in to the panel. So it's gonna bring up the authentication screen. So here we are. Now remember we changed our password. So it's not beef beef, it's demo demo. And now when we log in, we are fully logged in to beef and ready to go. Um, so caveats around this, as we went through the installation process, you may have noticed a thing saying don't run installer as sudo. So uh, I didn't take the time to go in and actually try to figure out what the permission error was to do that. Uh, but keep in mind that I'm setting this up on a test virtual machine that I just use sporadically just for some testing. It's not something I'm going to set up and expose. If I was going to actually expose this out and have it running, then obviously I'd want to make sure that we do have it securely locked down, right? Good passwords, make sure that we're not installing it maybe in an insecure way. Uh, but the, fa the issue that I saw was that I kept running into that XML RPC error and I found an easy way to go ahead and resolve that. That's what I wanted to show with this quick little video. So thanks for watching. If you have questions, uh, please send them our way, uh, james at developsec.com, or you can just reach us at developsec on Twitter. So thanks again for watching in.